Hello everybody, my name is Joe Carter and today I'm going to be doing a, an introductory video and mission playthrough for my new game called The Blitz 1941, oh, 1940 to 1941. And um, it's, uh, it's a solitaire a war game, it's a narrative type war game that <clears throat> builds a story. And uh, the player uh, is uh, plays the part of a of a Luftwaffe pilot <clears throat> uh, flying a Heinkel HE one eleven on uh, night nightly bombing raids against uh, English cities and sometimes in Ireland. And um, <clears throat> the player needs to complete uh, 35 missions, successful missions, for um, their tour to be complete. And um, it, uh, as the game title says, it's 1940 and 1941. So the, uh, the game begins on October 1st, 1940, and it ends at the latest on... Uh, May 10th, 1941. So there's a lot of time to complete the missions. And um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because there's just so much content involved that <clears throat> I don't have enough time on my phone to, to make this video any longer than about an hour or so. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to do a quick overview of the components. Um, over here we have the, uh, let me get my marker here. Over here we, ha we have the game map. This is England and uh, Ireland up here. And um, these are the different zones that the bomber must fly through. And then the city targets are in certain zone numbers. About the, the, about the same general area as on the map. So... Not exactly, it's a little bit abstracted, but it's the general area. And um, they travel through the zones each turn and uh, checking for flak and uh, if you're below 3,000 meters altitude. And then, uh, of course, RAF night fighters until they reach their target city zone. So um, here we have, and then here's the base. Here we have uh, the zone tracker map, and then this is where the different conditions are tracked in each of these zones. So instead of using a bunch of paper, each mission, I decided to create one of these, and the, the, these are the counters that you can put in the appropriate box depending on the conditions of the uh, situations of the uh, each zone. Okay, map zone. We have stream position, um, stream formation, uh, below 3,000 meters, zones per turn. In case there's damage, then <clears throat> they might have to do uh, two zones per turn, uh, two two turns per zone. And then we have the moon phase, new or full. This is these are not used very often. The game does not uh, does not track every moon phase only full or new just to simplify things because they would have created too many uh, di uh, table die roll modifiers so here we have the zone weather good poor bad we have RAF night fighter zone activity none light mod moderate or heavy and we have the flak level um, in each zone and in here we have the bomber field the game um, simulates uh, fuel loads uh, to and from the target, you're going to burn fuel, and then here, if you have bombs on board, it's going to be minus two fuel boxes per turn. And then here, no bombs would be, after the bombs are dropped, it would be minus one per <clears throat> per turn or per, ter per zone. And um, the fuel tank leak would be minus one fuel box per fuel tank leak. So if you your tanks are all shot up, uh, you're going to lose, you're going to run out of fuel very quickly. And then we have a bad weather, we have a minus one fuel box, extra fuel box, and 
if the bay, bomb bay doors are jammed open due to um, extra drag created, um, then you're going to have another minus one fuel box and then wing ice, uh, a minus one fuel, extra fuel box. And then if it's off course, uh, an extra minus one. Now, normally, um, basically the, these, these bombers, the HE-111s during the Blitz uh, attacks against England, uh, these were always night missions after, um, you know, starting in late September, early October. Uh, they switched to night due to heavy losses during the Battle of Britain. And um, that Hitler wanted to do a terror bombing campaign against the cities uh, as revenge. And he thought he could break the will of the, the British people, but he didn't. So um, basically, um, the, the, these bombers use radio beam navigation um, to follow radio, crossed radio beams from different locations in Germany or France or wherever, occupied France. And so they, the game simulates this and they're always on course if, uh, if the, the radio beam navigation equipment is functional. If it's knocked out, the, the target, city, uh, target city cannot be located. So they're going to have to return to base and then have to roll for navigation on the way back. Okay, so that's really the only time, one of the only times that you're going to use, uh, have an off course, an extra fuel burn for being off course. You're always on course, basically what I'm trying to say is you're always on course if uh, the radio navigation beam uh, equipment is functional. Okay, so, and if you run out of fuel, of course, you know, you're going to, you're going to, uh, have to bail out or whatever. So um, let me put this back here. Okay, so here we have the uh, crewman placement mat. All of these mats are A4 or 8.5 by 11, uh, which they're very small size, so you don't need a very large table to play these. And uh, we have the pilot medals boxes up here. The pilot will earn medals as the victory points um, score goes up. And uh, my pilot, uh, I'm already on mission uh, number number six, and I've I've completed three successful missions, and I had two unsuccessful uh, due to various problems. So um, I've already earned my first iron uh, iron cross medal, just a plain iron cross. And then here we have the random events boxes. Sometimes you're going to have random events, not very often. And then you're going to place them in here as reminders, for example, high pressure weather system. So as a reminder, the, for the remainder of the mission, you're going to put this in here and say, oh, I don't roll for weather anymore on the weather table because there's high pressure across England and Ireland for the rest of the mission. And then at the end of the mission, you remove these, of course, because no more random events starting with the next mission. They're all gone. So here we have the, the bomber, and we have the different uh, compartments, the nose compartment, pilot compartment. I don't want I shouldn't say compartment, I should say section, but that's okay. Um, bomb bay, waste compartment, and um, this is the tail, but there's no, there's no crew members, crewmen in the tail. So, um, and then these are the different uh, crewmen, the bombardier, and the pilot, and then radio operator, waste gunner, and ventral gunner. Ventral gunner is the lower gun on the belly of the bomber, and um, the radio operator operates the dorsal gun, which is the top gun on the top of the bomber. And the waste gunner, of course, operates the two waste guns on the sides of the fuselage. And so here we have the bombs counter, and um, this is just a, a, an easy way to remember uh, that you've dropped the bombs. After the bombs are dropped, you remove the counter. And then you have a little yellow box here that says bombs released. So now you know you're not carrying bombs anymore and you're not burning as much fuel each, each, uh, each turn. So that's a nice little reminder. And here we have the fire extinguishers. There's two of them. So if there's a fire on board, uh, you, like an oxygen fire, um, you can try to put out the, the oxygen fire.
And over here we have the combat mat, and um, we have uh, the different attack positions for the RAF night fighters, the British night fighters. And um, these are the, the night fighters. We have uh, the bullfighter is a twin engine night fighter. And these were the two most common night fighters, so that these two are, are included in the game. And then the Defiant, it had a turret mount behind the cockpit and it could shoot upwards. So the, the um, Defiant only does a vertical turret shot from below the bomber. That's how they attacked. And then the bow fighter can do a vertical uh, climb attack or attack from any of the positions. Most of the attacks by the bow fighter will be from the six o'clock positions. The side positions were not, um, attack positions were not very common at night because it was so risky and dangerous uh, heading you know towards the sides at the, such high rate of speed so most of the attacks for the bow fighter will be from the six o'clock position six o'clock low level and high positions okay okay and then um, there are some basics like basically you can have different skill levels for the bombers I mean for the uh, night fighters the RAF night fighters you can have green average veteran or elite uh, for average there's no counter uh, i tried to reduce the number of counters so there's no counter for average skill and um let's see we have uh here let's uh let me go ahead and show you the uh this is the tables book the game is based on uh, a tables engine and there are, how many pages? 22 pages. Oh, that sounds like a lot. Oh, it's so scary. Oh, my God. But it's not really that difficult, okay? Everything is played through in alphabetical and numerical order, okay? So here we have the target city assignment, and then we have the takeoff tables. And each turn or each zone, you're only going to roll on probably most of the zones. You're going to only roll... If you don't encounter, if you encounter no RF night fighters or um, flak, if you're below 3,000 meters, um, you're only going to roll. We're only going to roll about on about uh, two, about no, three tables. You're going to roll for the zone weather, and you're going to roll for random event or mechanical failure check. And I combine these two into one table to reduce one die roll. They were separate tables, but I combine them. So, one less die roll. So, one, two, and then navigation check or a fuel burn, which is not really a roll. You only roll for navigation check if your radio beam navigation equipment is inoperative. So, this isn't really a roll. Um, so, that's just one, two, and then we're going to check for RF night fighter zone activity. So, you're always going to roll for three... Um, on three tables per zone, minimum three rolls. So that's not that much, in my opinion. And if you encounter an RF night fighter, of course, you're gonna um, roll on these tables, you know, or flak if you're below 3,000 meters outside of the target city zone. So, um, and then we have the bombing. All of these tables tell you where to go in the notes, which like go to table C1. So we go back here. So you always know where to go because it tells you where to go next. But after a while, you'll just know. You won't have to even read it. Um, and we have the flak tables. We have the bailout tables. Control, bailout, uncontrolled bailout. Um, sea rescue, if they bail out over the sea in the green or yellow zones, these are considered ocean or the, um, you know, the English Channel. And... Um, Let's see, we have uh, evasion, like if they're shot down, you bail out over England or Ireland. You're going to roll for evasion to see if, they're, uh, if they make it back to, uh, to base to occupied France or not, if they're captured. Uh, and we have all the bomber damage tables. The, um, the damage is very um, detailed in this game, but not overly so to where uh, the game is unplayable. So I did streamline a lot of stuff in this game. I left out a lot of detail, believe it or not, that I felt that I felt did not contribute uh, to the game. 
So I try to streamline things as much as possible, but while keeping a lot of the detail at the same time. So we have lots of different uh, tables here. And uh, we have the wounds table. And then you can, if you encounter a storm, like bad weather, and it's a storm, you're going to um, risk a storm turbulence damage if it's rough weather or maybe icing. Icing on the wings is going to really um, hurt the bomber's performance. It's going to slow you down a lot. So, um, and then we have the landing tables. We turn the base, and then here we have uh, medals, uh, the victory point uh, requirements uh, for each medal earned. See, I'm I'm at about 300 VPs right now. No, four, uh, I'm at four, yeah, four, no, I'm at 300 right now. So I need to earn 401 to get my next Iron Cross, uh, which is Oak Leaves. We have the Random Events table, Mechanical Failure table, and Final Scoring table, New Game Setup here, you set up your crewman. Now each crewman uh, can, can have a total of five um, certain... Um, Let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, each crewman can have a maximum of um, four different skills. So, for example, the pilot can have an evasion skill, parachuting skill, and piloting skill. The bombardier can have evasion, navigation, and parachuting. The other, the other three, the radio operator, ventral gunner, and waste gunner, can have evasion, gunnery, parachuting, and spotting. Now, these... These skills give um, bonuses on on certain tables and under certain situations. So they can have a maximum of five skill points per skill. So like the evasion one, evasion skill will help them to successfully evade back to uh, occupied France if the bomber is shot down. They bail out. Okay. So it can help a little bit, not a lot. I, I didn't overdo things. And here we have the crewman names generator. These are German first names and German uh, family names. These names are um, are for the uh, the time period. I researched on the internet and I found the most popular names for this time period, the ni early 1940s. So they are uh, pretty accurate, I guess. So um, let me go ahead and show you the, uh, this is the bomber damage uh, log. This is the HE-111. And these are the different damages. What I do is I put mine in a clear, um, hard clear holder. And I'm going to use a, a whiteboard uh, dry erase marker. I can just mark off the boxes for the damage. And then this is gun ammunition. You mark off each box for each attack you make, and then once you run out of ammunition, of course, you can't shoot your guns anymore. So um, you don't have to put this in a clear holder or laminate and use a whiteboard marker. You can just write on it, each, use a new sheet each mission. Um, but um, I, personally, I, I like to save paper, so I, I prefer the whiteboard dry erase marker. Um, and using it in a clear folder. So I can reuse it forever, basically. Only one sheet. So this game, I was, I was very um, careful to make sure that this game doesn't use too much paper. Um, you know, some games like this use a lot of paper. There, there's a certain game I don't want to name. Two games I don't want to say what it is, but um, what they are. But they use a whole lot of paper. And... Um, this game does not. I care a lot about costs to the player and that this reduces the amount of paper used. So here we have the um, bomber crewman status sheet. Here you're going to write down the bomber's crewman's name and then their position in the bomber and then their start date and then their skills. You can have a maximum of five skill points each for certain skills and with enemy kills, ace status, and their fate if they're discharged or KIA, killed in action. So you can use probably for an entire campaign game, you only use one sheet, probably. Because if one of them gets killed or wounded and then they're replaced, you have to write in the new name, mark out, cross out the, the old one and write in the new one. 
but you're hopefully not going to go through this many crewmen um, for an entire campaign. Um, if you do, then I, I feel very bad for you <laughs> because you're, you're probably um, having a hard time in that game. So um, here we have the campaign log. Each mission, mission number is here. We have the date of the mission and we have the target, target city and zone number. We write in the name of the city. And then we have the victory points during the mission earned. And then we have the total victory points here. And then we have mission notes. And then you mark off the box if the mission was successful. For the mission to be successful, you must reach, the bomber must reach the target city zone and locate it, the city, and drop the bombs on the city. Then, then it's considered successful. If you do not reach the target city zone, or if you do reach the tar target city zone but cannot locate the city due to uh, British jammers, or you you're you're spoofed, your your radio beam navigation equipment is spoofed by you know false signals or whatever, which did happen. That's so it's included in the game. Then uh, and you drop your bombs like in an empty field, then also the mission is not considered successful. So you have to reach the target city zone, locate the city, and drop your bombs for it to be successful. So here I've only had three successful missions out of five. Uh, these other two mission three and four I had to abort. I uh, had a um, you know I had some problems. Had a fuel leak. It was hit by an RAF fighter, so we, we didn't have enough fuel. I didn't want to take a chance, so I returned the base. And then um, here, a random event, heater system failed uh, in the cockpit. So once again, I didn't want to take a chance. Uh, we had for frostbite. So I went ahead and dropped the bomber down to below 3,000 meters, and I returned the base. It's just not worth the risk, um, you know, I I of losing the bomber. Because if you fly lower, you're, you have a higher chance of um, being attacked by um, RAF night fighters. So, Okay, I'm about 22 minutes into the video, so I want to go ahead and... Um, I think that's all the... Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's just about everything for the components. Um, I'm on mission number... Number six. We're on Swansea is the target. I hope I pronounced that right. British viewers, if I pronounce it wrong, please, uh, Swansea, 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 maybe Swansea. Uh, please let me know if I pronounced it wrong. And uh, Swansea is in <clears throat> red zone 5.2. So I put the target city zone marker. And then this is the bomber H1111 base. We are going to fly through. The, we're going to take this route. It's the only route we can take. We're going to bomb it, hopefully, and then return to base. Uh, most missions take about 20 to 30 minutes. So it's very, it plays very quickly. Um, you know, you can knock out maybe two to three missions in one hour, probably two on average. So it, it sets up quickly, it breaks down quickly, and it plays pretty quickly. So, <clears throat> and as far as I know, this is the only game that simulates an HE-111 specifically focuses on the HE-111 bomber. Uh, this is the only board game that I know of. There might be one out there, but I don't know. I don't know of it. So. So this is supposedly the first. Okay, we're going to go ahead and, um, like I said, we're on mission number... Uh, I still have all my original crew. Nobody's uh, been discharged or killed yet, so that's good. We have my skills here. Let's see, my uh, bom uh, bombardier has five navigation points. Now, there's no bomb... There's no bomb... Bombing skill because if they're over the city it's area terror bombing okay if they're over the city they locate it and they're over the city they just drop the bombs and it's considered on target so they don't need to 
uh, hit some like small area like a factory or something. Remember, this is nighttime area terror bombing. Okay, the same as the RAF um, Bomber Command did um, against German cities. Okay, in, in reven as revenge against them doing this against England. Okay, so um, my uh, pilot has five uh, piloting skill points. My radio operator has five spotting skill points. Like in RF uh, night fighter attacks, you have to spot it in order to attack it. And then my waste gunner has five gunnery points, and my ventral gunner has five gunnery points. Now, you can start out the game with a maximum of 100 crewman uh, skill points, basically bonus points. Bonus points are earned for each successful mission or if you shoot down uh, an RAF night fighter. So you need to use your bonus points to purchase skills for your crewman, okay? But also it has an adjustable difficulty level for starting the game. Here you can do starting bonus points, which are used for the skills, up to 100. Okay, so up to 100. You can start from 0 to 100. If you want a more challenging game, a very challenging game, start out with 0. And if you want a so-so challenging game, start out with 50 bonus points. And then if you want an easier, way easier game, start out with 100 and max out all of their skills right away. So it's your choice how many bonus points you start out with to purchase crewman skills. Okay, so I try to be very flexible with the difficulty level in this game. Uh, if you want an, I, 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 I believe I started out with five, ten, fifteen. I started out with twenty-five skill points. So I gave each crewman five, um, five uh, points. So I maxed out one skill each for all of my crewmen starting. Um, so. Anyway, um, okay, we'll go ahead and, uh, this, this video is about half an hour in, so I want to go ahead and continue. I want to try to finish it in, within an hour. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to roll on, um, we're going to go to table B. Okay, first we rolled on the target city, which is Swansea. I hope I pronounced that right. And then Swansea is... Zone 5.2, okay, and a fuel allotment, fuel box is allotted, how much we're allowed to load up is uh, 25 fuel boxes. So we're at 25 fuel boxes, okay. We don't load to max because you're going to carry extra bombs, you know, it's abstracted, but the less the fuel load, you're only going to load, you're going to have a little bit of reserve fuel in case you run into a problem, but not a lot. You're going to carry extra bombs to drop on the cities. So let's go ahead and get started here. The date is, this mission date is um, October 7th, 1940. Mission number six. Okay, we're going to roll on base weather, B1 for takeoff. Okay, it's poor weather. There's ne you never take off during bad weather. Okay, there's a possibility on table A1 that there's no mission. There's about a 20% chance. Bad weather, maintenance, whatever. Okay, and then for London, London is a large percent chance of bombing um, because it was bombed so often. So there's a good chance they're going to be bombing London a lot. So, okay, we have poor weather, and we're going to roll for a takeoff on table B2. Takeoff is okay. We go to table... We skip to table C1. Okay, we're now the bombers in the air. No problems. Now, we're going to join the stream formation. They don't fly tight formation. It's very loose, long stream formation. You know, many, many kilometers long. Uh, I don't know how many, maybe several kilometers long stream formation full of bombers and very loose formation at a little bit different altitudes so they have a less chance of collision 
Okay, we're going to uh, roll for the stream position on table B4. We rolled an 8, so we're in the middle stream position. So we're going to go to middle stream position for the remainder of the mission, unless we leave the stream and then we'll go out, out of the stream. We'll move that. But we're in the stream now. And um, we're going to go to... Okay, here it says move bomber into the neck. We're going to go to C1, move bomber into the next zone. So we're going to move into the first one. And we're going to roll for weather in the next zone. The weather won't change very often. It will change, but not so often. I use the modifiers to make sure it doesn't change too drastically within one, you know, the next turn. Okay, we rolled a 15. So that's poor weather. We move this marker to pour. There we go. Okay, for this zone. And then we're going to go ahead and skip to table. We're going to skip this as bad weather. We're going to skip these. We're going to go to random event or mechanical failure, 2D10. Okay, nothing. So we're going to skip engine oil leak, fire check, and frostbite check. We don't have either of these. Crewman frostbite check. So we're going to skip to navigation check, fuel burn. Now our radio beam navigation is functional, so we're not going to roll. We're automatically on course, but we have the fuel burn uh, amounts right here. Bombs are on board, minus two fuel boxes. No other problems. We're automatically on course, so we don't have to roll for on course, off course. So uh, minus two fuel boxes, we just burn because we're carrying bombs, so we're burning extra fuel due to the extra weight. And we're going to go ahead and skip random flak because we are above 3,000 meters altitude. We're going to go to table C9 for RAF night fighter activity in the zone. Okay, we roll 13. Now we have poor weather, so we have a minus 2. And then we're in a green zone, minus 2, so no night fighters. Okay, that's the end of that turn. We're going to skip all these other tables because... We don't have to check them this time. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go back to C1. And we're going to move in, into the next. Yeah, okay, there we go. And then yellow 2.2. And we're going to roll for weather again on table C1. I'm not going to show you the tables anymore unless it's a new table. Okay, 8 plus 11. Uh, yeah, poor weather again. We almost had good weather, but still poor. Okay, we're going to skip the table C4 for a random event or mechanical failure. No, nothing. Okay, and we're going to go to C7. Navigation check. No, we're not going to check for navigation, but we are going to do fuel burn. Minus two fuel boxes because we're carrying the bombs. But no other problems. We're going to roll for RAF night fighter. Activity, five, nothing. So they are not out tonight. Not yet. Okay, we're going to go back to C1 again, and we're going to roll for weather, 17, oh no, wow, okay, bad weather, Ooh, okay, well, now we got to go ahead and roll, depending on the season, October or March through May, so it's October, so we're going to roll for this bad weather. Now, if you want to avoid the bad weather, and you're on the outbound um, leg of the, the mission, you can turn back and go back. Like if you're, you have uh, damage already and you don't want to risk more turbulence damage, you can return to base. You know, I don't want to fly through this storm anymore. But if you're on the inbound, you have to fly through it no matter what. You have no choice. You can't fly around it because it's like a pretty big area. So we're going to go ahead and... Um, do one minus extra minus one fuel box because it's a storm. We're bouncing around and and you know the wind and everything. We're we're dodging the thunderstorm. You know, we're trying to fly between them, but we'll, so we're burning extra fuel basically. So we're gonna go ahead and go to C two and roll. See if we got any damage. We're gonna roll one d ten. We have about a fifty percent chance of damage. We rolled a three. No damage. That's great. Okay. No bomber damage. Okay. We're going to go ahead and go to 
uh, C4 mechanical failure check. Oh, let's move this to bat. There we go. And uh, 10, I mean uh, 46, nothing. We're going to go to the table C7, fuel burn, minus two boxes. Okay. We already did the extra minus one for bad weather uh, earlier, uh, right when we were on the table. Okay, we're going to go for RF Night Fighter activity, 13, minus three for bad weather. 10, no, nothing. Okay, there's bad weather, so they are not up tonight in zone 3.2. The RAF is grounded due to bad weather. Okay, that's it. We're going to go to the next zone again. And we're going to repeat this one more time. We're going to roll for weather. 9, oh, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, the weather went back to poor. That's good. No more bad weather. We have a plus four modifier, so now it's poor again. And uh, we're going to roll for a random event or mechanical failure check. Nothing, 54. We're going to skip to C7. We're going to do fuel burn, minus two fuel boxes. Okay, we still have fuel. We're doing good. Okay, we're going to roll for a night fighter activity. Nothing, 12. Okay. Now you notice you're not going to encounter, I try to make the game pretty realistic. I don't know, you know, how realistic, but I try to make it fairly realistic. And um, you're not going to have like tons of action the entire time. I did not want to do that because, like I said, I just felt like uh, that's not realistic. So you will have some action, but not, not continuous action. Most of your action will occur in the target city. Um, zone. So, okay, we rolled for that, and we did the fuel burn, and then uh, we're going to roll for night fighter activity. We rolled already, nothing, and uh, that's it. Okay, and we are now in the target city zone. Okay, we're going to go back to C1 again. We're going to roll for weather, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, we have poor weather again, and um, yeah, poor weather. And we're going to go to C4 for random event check or mechanic failure. Nothing. You only have about a 3% chance of a random event or mechanical failure happening. 1 to 97, nothing. 98 to 100, yes. And then after that, you roll to see which one. So about one and a half, about a 50% chance of each if you hit the 3%. So it's not gonna happen very often. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do fuel burn again. Minus two fuel boxes. And we're gonna go ahead and roll for the RAF Night Fighter activity. Okay, we rolled a, let's see, we rolled a 20, so. Okay, we have moderate Night Fighter activity. So there's a good chance we're gonna have an enemy uh, encounter. So we're going to put moderate here. Okay. And um, we're going to go ahead and roll for night fighter attacking on table C10. Under the moderate activity, you have light, moderate, heavy. We're going to do moderate roll. Okay, I rolled a. Um, a seven, so we're gonna have a bow fighter at six o'clock low. Usually, you're only gonna encounter one night fighter during an encounter, but sometimes you only encounter two, but never more than two. So, we're gonna take our bow fighter counter and he's attacking at six o'clock low position. Okay, this is our bomber, this is the night fighter, these are the positions again, and um. We're going to go ahead and roll for the pilot skill level on C11. See what skill he is. Okay, four is average, so no um, no marker for average skill. And we're going to go ahead and go to table C12 for defensive spotty. Bomber gunner defensive spotty. We're going to see if we can spot him. Now, only the ventral gunner will be able to spot him because he's in the low position. For his uh, view, fields of fire... 
only the ventral gunner can spot six o'clock low. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and roll to see if uh, let's see if the ventral gunner has a spotting skill. VG, no, he does not have a spotting skill, so we don't no bonus for spotting. Okay. Oh, good. We rolled a nine. Okay. Let's see. The weather is poor. So, do, 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 do. okay, we spotted him. That's good. Okay, so we spotted him. So that means we can either do an eva take evasive action, but I don't want to do that because there's a risk of colliding with another uh, HE-111 bomber in the stream. So I don't want to do that. Uh, we're going to just hold, hold course, no, no severe, you know, diving, or we're not going to do that. And um, we're going to go to C-14. Bomber gunner defensive fire, and I'm going to take my counter here and use an attack. These are just nice little reminders how to track, and we're going to go to defend. That means we're attacking him, and uh, we're going to roll on C14, bomber uh, gunner defensive fire, and we'll see if we can hit him. Okay, we rolled uh, 10. What's the weather? We have gunnery, so we get a plus one for five gunnery skill points. Okay, we rolled a 10, and then poor weather's a minus one, so we, an 11, and then a 10. Yeah, so we hit them. Okay. Now, the knife fighters are pretty difficult to shoot down. You're not going to um, be shooting down like two or three every mission. You'll be lucky if you can shoot one down every 10 missions. Um, that's how difficult it is because they usually won't make a second attack, especially if they're damaged. So we're going to go and roll on C15 to see how much damage he sustained. Okay, he sustained, uh, we rolled a 7, so he sustained 3 damage points. So we're going to take our 3 hits. So we're going to take our 3 hits marker. This is a reminder that he sustained three hits from our gunner, okay? Now, it's his turn to attack. RF knife fighter attack on bomber. We go to C16, and we're gonna roll, uh, he's attacking from the low position, six o'clock low, and we roll a nine, and, okay, yeah, he hit us, actually. Those cannons hit us. Okay, so that means we're going to go ahead and go to table. Or we're going to go down here to note um, note A to see how many hits we took. Oh, actually, note B. Yeah, 6 o'clock low, so B. We're going to roll to see how many hits the bomber took. Okay, 5. We took 3 hits. Okay, that's not good. Okay, we're going to go to table... time have we got okay we're running out of time here we're gonna go ahead and go to table um, F1 a we're gonna roll three times okay I'm gonna roll actually 1d10 okay um, that's superficial and then we're gonna roll again okay the uh, the waste we rolled a seven the waste was hit so we go to table F7 there you go. The tail section. Oh, let's see. It looks like I have a mistake here. Okay, tails F8. That's right. Okay. Tail, we're going to roll 2d10 on the tail section. 14. Rudder took one hit. Okay. Now, each damage hit to the controls, surfaces, or controls, it's going to make landing a little more difficult. So we're going to go ahead and mark off one rudder hit. And it, it, it can be dis, um, inoperative after three hits. So if, like, for example, the rudder and the elevator are knocked out, um, or just, yeah, the bomber can't be controlled. If the elevator gets knocked out, the bomber cannot be controlled. So you'd have to bail out. Okay, now let's go ahead and roll one more time for the third hit. Okay, pilot compartment, F3, that's not good. 
Okay, we're going to roll 2d10 to see what damage we sustained. Nine, superficial damage. Good. No damage. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and go to table... We're going to go back to table um, collision check. See if he collided with the bomber. Okay, no. No collision. Okay, and then we're going to go up to C18 to see if he's going to do a follow-up attack. We're going to roll a 1d10. No, we rolled a 1. No follow-up attack. So he's gone. Okay. We hit him, but we didn't shoot him down. Now, the RAF um, bowfighter can sustain 6 hits before it's shot down. The Defiant can sustain 5 hits before it's shot down. So there is a chance you can shoot it down. Not a good chance. But there is always a chance you can shoot him down. Okay. Oh, yeah. One thing I forgot to do is I forgot to mark off the, the ventral gunner ammunition. One box. Okay. So we have a total of 10 ammo points per, uh, per gun. The waste guns are two guns, but each has five. So, But you can use any, either ammo for both guns. So that's not a problem. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to, uh, okay, the knife fighter um, encounter is over. So we're going to go ahead and go to skip over to D1, target city zone. And we're going to roll to see if we locate the target city. Okay. Yeah, we located. We rolled a five. The possibilities are radio navigation beam equipment spoofed by British decoy signals, bombs dropped onto open field, Target city, uh, target city missed and mission not successful. That didn't happen. Okay, three to four would be bomber radio navigation e equipment jammed by British jammers. Unable to locate target city. You can do one more time. You can spend one more turn in the zone if you can't, uh, if the jammers jammed your signal. But after that, the second time you don't locate it, you have to return to base. You can't drop your bombs. Uh, but we did, we found the, um, we found the city and we're locked on to the city. So we're going to go ahead and go to the bomb run. Searchlight check, D2. We're going to roll 1D10. Okay, we rolled a 7. There's no new moon. Let's see. We're above 3,000 meters. Good, not good weather. Okay, that's no searchlights uh, locked onto us. So we're going to go ahead and roll for flak over target, D3. We rolled a six, poor weather, four. This is not London. If, the, if it's London, there's a good chance you're gonna have heavy flak. So let's see, six, four, yeah, we have light flak. We're gonna go to table D4. We're gonna roll in the light flak uh, column. Ooh, we rolled an eight. Oh, that was close. The flak almost hit us. You have a chance of one or two hits in moderate. If it's, I mean, in light flak, if it's moderate, you have a chance of 1 to 4. And if it's heavy, you have a chance of 1 to 6. Now, if the uh, 1 to 6 hits. Now, if the searchlights are locked onto the bomber, you roll twice on these tables. Okay. So, uh, that's it. We go to D5. Bomb release over Target City. Okay, our bombs are released over Swansea. 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 Okay, someone please correct me or let me know the pr correct pronunciation. Um, so the bombs are dropped. See, bombs released. Okay, good. Now we're going to have a lighter load. We're going to burn less fuel. Now the bombs are dropped, and I put this little passage in here. Far below, while the deluge of bombs continues to rain down, massive fires spread across the city as terrified citizens flee for their lives, desperately looking for anywhere safe to shelter themselves from the choking smoke and searing heat. So it's a bad situation for those people down there. Don't forget, don't forget about that. This is your job, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dirty job, bombing civilians. Okay, so um, that's it. We're gonna go back to C1. No more encounters, no more flak. I simplified, I streamlined this part of it. I made it deadlier, but only one time. You're only going to roll once. So we're going to go ahead and go back. We're finished. We dropped the bombs. 
And we're going to go to C1 again. We're going to roll for weather. Okay, 12, 13, 4. Okay, poor weather again. So we're not going to change anything. Let's put this back to none so far. And um, we're going to go to table C4. Nothing. No random events. We're going to go navigation. Okay, now we are we lost, we dropped our bombs. So we're only going to burn one fuel box per turn, which is good. See, we still have a lot of reserve fuel. We're going to be okay. But if your fuel tanks get shot up, you have uh, uh, several fuel tank leaks um, or whatever, you know, you're, you're going to be in big trouble. There's a good chance you're going to run out of fuel before you can make it back to base. You'll have to bail out. Okay, we're going to roll for night fighter activity. Oh, wow. Okay, RAF night fighter activity. We rolled 20, 18. Okay, moderate activity. Wow, okay. We're going to go to table C10. One. No night fighters. Wow, we were lucky on that. Okay, but they were out and about. They were, they were uh, on... Uh, on standby, circling, looking for for bombers. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go back to C1 again, move into the next zone. And we're gonna roll for weather. 14, 15, 16, 17, poor weather again, no change. We're gonna go to C4, random event. No random event or mechanical failure. We're gonna go to C7, fuel burn. Minus one. We're going to go to C9 for night fighter zone activity. 11, 10, 9, no, nope, poor weather, nope. Okay, nothing. They are not out tonight for some reason. I guess it's the weather. The weather is keeping them, keeping them uh, grounded, some of them. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go back to C1 again. We're going to move into the next zone. We're getting closer to home base. This is going to be a successful mission, I think. No problems. And uh, we're going to roll for weather. Okay, poor weather again. We're going to roll for random event or mechanical failure on C4. Nothing. We're going to go to C7, fuel burn. Okay. And we're going to roll for night fighter activity. Oh, we rolled a 20 again. Okay. Moderate activity again. Okay, we rolled a two. <laughs> no night fighters. We got lucky there. Okay, very lucky. Okay, we're going to go back to C1 again. Move into the next zone. And we're going to roll for weather. Poor weather again. No change. Poor weather is pretty much all over England right now. Okay, we're going to roll for random event. And mechanical failure, nothing. We're going to skip to C7, fuel burn, and minus one box, that's it. And we're going to go to skip to C9, six, okay, RAF night fighter activity, nothing, okay. But we're on the French coast now, so there's a much less chance. And uh, that's it. We go back, into, now we do still roll through the tables, even when you're in... Um, the box, Mo some of the tables when you're in the base box. Okay, we're going to go back to C1. We're going to roll for weather. Okay, poor weather again. No change. C4, random event, mechanical failure, nothing. Okay, fuel burn. Okay, now there's a note here. See, the notes instruct you where to go. Okay, if entering HE-111 base zone, go to table G1. Okay, G1. Way back here in the back, let's see. Landing at base. Okay, we have no damage. All these modifiers are different damage or whatever, weather modifiers. So we have poor weather, we have a minus one modifier. But we have five piloting skill points. So pretty much, uh, we're going to be guaranteed a smooth landing. Yeah, okay, no problem. So the bombers landed. We're back at base. 
and um, we had reserve fuel, no problems. It was a successful mission. We earned, um, we're going to go ahead and go to table H. Okay. Return to base, victory points awarded, lost this mission. We earned 100 victory points because the mission was successful. We did locate the city and we dropped the bombs. Okay. And we earned three bonus points. If you shoot down the fighters, night fighters, you also earn victory points or bonus points. But if your HE-111 is wrecked, like you bail out or you bail whatever, if it's wrecked, it's always wrecked if you bail out. You can't, you have to bail out if you're in any zone except the gray box base. Because remember, this is nighttime. You're not going to risk a, a belly landing in, a, in an English field in pitch black, you know, total night, darkness, whatever. So um, the only time you're going to maybe salvage the bomber, it's not totally wrecked, wrecked, is if, you, if you're you going to crash land at base. Any other time you're going to bail out for whatever reason over the, the, the English Channel or England or Ireland. So... Um, yeah, so if your bomber is wrecked, you, you bail out, whatever, or if it's destroyed, trying to land, uh, you're going to lose 250 bonus points. But the mission would still be successful if you did locate the target city and dropped your bombs. So that's it. So we earn another three bonus points. Okay, we're just about finished here. So we, we already had four... I, re I saved them from the last mission, missions, so seven. Okay, I'm going to probably use these to build up my some of my skills, my crewman skills. Now, the mission was successful, and then we have 400. Okay, we almost earned our medal. One more point, and we get the medal, the second iron cross with the oak leaves. Okay, mission was successful. And then we're going to just keep doing our missions until our campaign is finished or we die or are discharged, whatever. So um, that's all for today. Um, the game is um, will be available soon as print and play on Wargame Vault. So please watch for that. And I hope you enjoyed the, the mission demo. And um, it, the game's a lot of fun. There's a lot of replayability due to um, all of the, you know, the, the modifiers and the game detail. Um, no two missions will ever be the same. And um, I hope that you, uh, you know, I hope that you enjoy it. I put a lot of time and effort into this. And if you, if you enjoy Target for Today or Target for Tonight, you will probably enjoy this one as it plays fairly similarly, but it is different in many ways. And um, I, I feel it's a little more streamlined, but I, I love uh, Target for Today is one of my uh, favorite games of all time. So Steve Dixon uh, did a, just a wonderful job on it. And um, I still play it regularly, so... Anyway, well, thank you for watching, and um, I guess that's all for today.